Where to buy in March and ongoing in 2024 in Australia for residential property investment. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down those local government areas, those suburbs, and even potentially streets that are set to lead the country forth in terms of capital growth, in value, and also in rental growth. So I'm going to be diving into those suburbs right now. Uh, Firstly, before I do, I wanted to give you a snapshot. This is a higher level overview of what we are seeing entering into March 2024. It does change every month. We don't outsource this. We don't rely on third party external data providers. We have our own property search engine that every day is going out to over 10,000 websites and gathering all on market listings. We also have an off market search engine as well that's plugging those in there. Generally, we are seeing properties picked up in our search engine one to two days before they arrive at the big listing portals, realestate.com and domain.com. And to give you some idea, domain has about 145,000 properties available for, for sale. Realestate.com has about 190,000 and we're up over 200,000 in our daily search engine. That means that, you know, the derivative data, things like sales volume, yield, price growth, days on market, all of the wonderful metrics that we look at in predicting property price growth are based on the full pie, the full the conversation, all of the properties and not a subset of them. That means that the conversation, the calls, the algorithm is more accurate. It's based on a larger sample. It is more accurate and it is more timely. So what does that mean in practical terms? Well, it means as of March, the number one local government area emerging in 2024 is the city of Brisbane. Perth has had its day. If you were to ask me, Brisbane is potentially where Perth was uh, 12 to 18 months ago, followed by the city of Gold Coast. Uh, there is the city of Wanneroo over in WA that's still doing great things, Toowoomba, Liverpool, Blacktown, Armadale, all the way down through this list. We are, as an organisation, spread across multiple uh, local government areas, multiple states as of right now. WA, South Australia, New South Wales, and Queensland. And we are coming in and out of those locations strategically on almost a rolling weekly basis. Let's put this in context. What does this mean? Anyone can stand there and go, these are the suburbs that are up and coming. This algorithm has been well tested. It's not just theory. It's not just projected results. This is what is likely to occur based on back testing. These are real world results and applications, as you'll see in a moment. This is on an advertisement. I need to say this to put what I'm, the, the areas in context. I need to say this so you listen when I say which local government areas potentially have the most potential going forward in 2024. So what did this mean? In the last month, our approved property purchases that are actually acquisitions with clients have gone up 3.1% in value. Think about that for a moment, one month. In the last quarter, 8.9%. You'll see in a moment the, the stellar results we had as an as a overall in 2023. In 2022, we generated 16.2% capital growth across many hundreds, many hundreds of millions of dollars worth of acquisitions. This is it in minute detail. Every one of these dots is an individual property purchase with a client. Uh, the overall compounding average growth rate since 2015, uh, sorry, I'll go back a slide and I'll do it in visual terms. The average compounding capital growth rate since 2015 is 24%. Every year, 24% added to your property's value. In one year alone, 2023, we generated just over 31% capital growth across many hundreds of millions of dollars where the client purchases. Uh, you know, that is what we're talking about. That is what an algorithm based on the largest data set allows us to do. So let's just put that aside for a moment. I needed to go down that path. I don't really like talking about ourselves too much, uh, just to give the context to demonstrate the power of what we're doing. And this is it in a more, little bit more detail. The orange there is the trend line and you can see we are getting better year on year. Really important to mention. Firstly, this is what you've come for. Where should we be looking to buy in March 2024 and beyond? City of Brisbane, number one. It's in the top 88 percentile of all suburbs across uh, all local government areas across the country. Think Olympic Games, think extremely healthy employment landscape with uh, essentially leading the country in terms of unemployment. Uh, employers are desperate for jobs 
desperate for people to fill them. Sorry, they're desperate for people to fill the jobs that they have. They're desperate for workers. Federal government and the local governments are scrambling to attract migration to fill the gaps, and there's no houses for them to move to. You know, wonderful lifestyle factors. So you have you know intrinsic or intra state migration north and that's a phenomenon we've always had in Australia people going up north for the warmer weather let's leave the doldrums of Melbourne and down here in Tassie for a warm Brisbane lifestyle and now you have extreme unemployment employers desperate for people to fill the jobs and international migration potentially coming and solving those problems but guess what you have low population growth because there's a backlog of people wanting to move there and there's no homes for them to move to so these are all conditions which drive multiple eyeballs onto the same property for sale, the same property for rent, and these are the conditions that drive property price growth. Low new home construction, under-supplied population growth, and great new projects in the pipeline. This is the second local government area on our list, the city of the Gold Coast. I love it when one and two are pretty close to each other across this vast country because it shows we're on the right track. It shows they might be doing similar things at similar times for similar reasons. It shows that they might be feeding off each other. Once again, it's almost a mirror image. We're not talking apartments on the Gold Coast. We are talking three or four bedroom family homes in suburbia with two dogs two jobs, two cars, a jet ski, two garage doors. This is the type of population that is moving to the Gold Coast and driving up property prices now and into the future. Once again, we've got a lot of people wanting to move there, extremely high new uh, construction and new projects in the pipeline, great employment health, but little construction that's possible. We're completely underservicing the level of demand that's moving into the city of the Gold Coast. The next one, the third local government area on the list. You can see here that nothing is hidden. I've literally gone one, two, three, and giving you a high level snapshot of each. The city of Wanneroo is up in the top quartile of all cities across the country. It's not quite there at the same level of Brisbane and the Gold Coast, which are really pushing forward, really emerging quickly. But we have already been acquiring properties in Wanneroo now for 18, 12, 18 months. Um, so it's at the back end of our buying window. This is the time when you get fussy about individual suburbs. The overall opportunity might be decreasing slightly. We might be two years or one year through a five or a six year cycle. Okay, really strong growth cycle. That just means we wanna be finding those suburbs that potentially are set to deliver from zero, day zero. There's probably going to be fewer of them in the city of Wanneroo. We looked at Brisbane and it was almost half we're right up at the top echelon of suburbs on a national level. In Wanneroo, you would expect it to be fewer, um, but it is still there, it is still emerging. It is still the third most emergent LGA in the country. I just, it's not quite the same levels as Brisbane and the Gold Coast. Once again, it's the same old story. The East is the West. We've got low new homes being constructed. You've got great lifestyle factors. You have really strong international migration into Perth. People are looking around going, hang on, this is pretty good. I'm not even gonna bother going to the Eastern States. Remember, we can only buy one property in one street in one suburb. So I've talked about the overarching three local government areas set to really move forward in March, 2024 and beyond. Okay. So we need to understand it's not just enough to find the local government area, we need to go to the suburb, the street, and then we need to find the property. Just so you know, to give you some idea about the tolerances, when we are doing street and property level due diligence, for every 50 properties that are available for purchase, say in that suburb overall, generally from our perspective, there's only around one which passes all of our tolerances and our tests. So that's how fussy you need to be and then you need to stack up that due diligence back up through the chain to match against the local government area, the suburb, the street, and the property. What are those tolerances? What are those due diligence checklists? So we've got 15,304 suburbs that are investable in the country. Based on our algorithm, as I mentioned before, we only look at the top 10 percentile of suburbs. Based on our algorithm, there's only 1,500 of those. I've gone through those 1,500 every month and manually vet the new entrants, and it's only generally around one in every five, one in every six of them pass my manual checks. So it's qualitative and quantitative. So we've got around 250 approved Ripe House advisory locations.
You can see the breakdown here, the vast majority of those are in Queensland. Uh, then we've got South Australia, WA, New South Wales, and some in Victoria. So that's just giving you a high-level snapshot. The average entry point for these suburbs is just over 500k, and we should be targeting a 5.1%, if not above, yield. So it's starting at a 5% yield, 5.1%. So the snapshot for the week in those 250 suburbs, 4,800 properties available in our on and off market network. Remember, we have the largest search engines for properties in the country. We uh, located 4,800 individual properties. We then run through an automated checklist. Uh, this is done uh, using our computers and our systems. We're looking at things like high supply in the pipeline, low demand property types, ruling those units out as if they're not in demand, incorrect number of bedrooms, uh, suboptimum land size for the area, price outside core demand, high public housing in the suburbs. So we're ruling out four in every five of those properties automatically. We've now got a juicy subset where we are then doing our detailed street level sweet spot analysis. Okay, that's then ruling out another three quarters of properties. So we've now got 252 properties, which we are really stretching our legs and doing deep dive due diligence. We are calling real estate agents for each and every one of those properties. We are asking them pro forma transcripts of questions. We are building out an information profile for that property. We are then going through a more detailed due diligence checklist, uh, which has gone uh, from 252 properties, brought that down to 92. So this is a really fussy drop off once again. Things like public housing, pools, land shape, main road, noise, overlays, railway agents, land size, conditional era property, schools, overlay fire. Uh, you know, a very detailed due diligence checklist. We've gone from 252 properties then, uh, done a lot of work, manual work, and brought that down to 92 properties overall. So you can see 92 versus 4,800 at the beginning of the week. So we're doing this every day. We are analyzing every single on-market opportunity. There is not a property in the suburbs that we are looking at that we haven't analyzed, ruled in or out. We have a full track record of what we've done on that property. For those 92 properties, we have done a formal valuation by a qualified valuer, and only 62 of them have met our minimum return on investment requirements. Of those, we have assigned 56 to clients, and then we've only made 22 offers. So we have this huge machine, this huge engine that's moving every single day, looking at hundreds and hundreds of properties, and we are extremely, extremely fussy in making offers. About one in every 200 properties, really rough numbers, we actually end up making an offer on. So that gives you some idea of, uh, you know, this needs to be a funnel. We need to look at the three areas of focus, which I've talked to you about um, just before but then we need to take a deeper dive into our research and what we are looking at there. Next steps, if you'd like to discuss these locations, if you'd like to have a conversation about what you're trying to achieve in property investment, if you'd like to even determine if Ripe House Advisory and us are a good fit to work with you and to deliver what you're trying to achieve, book in a 15 minute discovery call. It's a really important next step for us to be able to help each other.